All right, Alexander. So we're doing this video in um, a premiere format. We've never done a premiere video on uh, on YouTube. And uh, of course, this will go on BitChute and other platforms as well. But for YouTube, we want to kind of push it out as a premiere. Um, not for any other reason other than it's kind of interesting breaking news. Mm. It's not earth shattering breaking news, but it's mm -hmm. interesting breaking news that we wanted to, to get out to, to you guys. And uh, we decided to get together and do a real quick uh, video on Navalny, Alexei Navalny, and uh, the fact that Germany has now come out with their conclusions as to what mm. poisoned, and I say quote, poisoned mm. Navalny, and they have identified that substance as, drum roll please, Novichok. Mm. So there we have it. This is uh, Novichok part two. Oh, Novichok, <laughs> the sequel. Novichok, the sequel. Novichok part two. It's obviously become now the uh, uh, the you know the the poison du jour for these sort of uh, events that follow Russia. Uh, I have to say, Alex. I mean, I I was half expecting it, expecting this. If you remember this bizarre story, you know, Navalny was in this Russian hospital. He'd been sort of saved by the Russian doctors. Um, he was the, the, then this airplane came from Germany, um, breaking all the all the uh, pandemic restrictions and travel restrictions. But never mind. He's put on the plane from Russia, taken to Germany. He's taken to the Charité Hospital in Germany. They then said that, you know, they'd found the, this trace of this mysterious inhibitor, but they couldn't say what it was, which had somehow affected his condition and caused him to be in the you know, ill in this way. So I, I saw the name of this inhibitor or this the, the, this group of inhibitors. So I then looked it up on Wikipedia. And sure enough, it said that, you know, this can be produced by nerve agents, including Novichok. So I said to myself, night follows day. <laughs> They're going to say in a few days it was a Novichok poison. And sure enough, a German military laboratory now says it's Novichok. Now, I don't know. I am not in a position, obviously, to second guess this medical evidence. All I am saying is I am totally cynical about this story. I think anybody who's followed it closely would be. Why would this happen at this time in this way? So, you know, it, it, it doesn't make any kind of sense to me politically or geopolitically. And as I said, the way it was all building up almost looks like we were heading towards a predetermined conclusion. All right. So just to recap, Novichok was what uh, what they found in uh, with us, Sergei and Yulia Skripal. Mm -hmm. So, you know, about roughly, when was that? About a year and a half ago? It was two that years happened? ago. It was in was March. Two, two years ago, March, two, okay. March 2018. So this is this is where it appeared, and then of course we had the other two people in Britain who were uh, poisoned when they found the perfume bottle, and right. now sure enough we have Navalny, who's also allegedly poisoned right. by it in an airplane flying from Tomsk to Moscow, which stops in Omsk. And as I said, it's it doesn't seem to me to make a great deal of sense, but there we are. So he either got it on the airplane or he got it drinking tea at the airport. Well, because there were the rumors that he got it from the poison was inserted in the tea. Of course, I'm just saying what people, yeah, what there was speculation. Well, either way, which, which I have to say, I find that very difficult to yeah. believe, by the way, because I mean, we've got film of the tea being provided to him, and it's not obvious or, or, or logical to see how the how the you know the poison was put in it uh, and why they thought that the tea would be drunk by Navalny and not by someone else. But quite apart from anything else, if it was the tea, then again, it seems to have taken a surprisingly long time to be effective, which is strange, given how dangerous Novichok is supposed to be. But, you know, there we are, all these same uh, questions that we were left with with the Skripal affair, they seem to be coming back this time. Yeah, I mean, with the Skripal affair, we had uh, ducks that were... Uh... Ducks were poisoned. <laughs> Children were poisoned, poisoned, and exactly. they put yeah. they, they put the city on lockdown. And uh, yeah. Yeah. supposedly, it was this uh, this deadly 
nerve agent that's, yes. you know, the minute one yes. tiny little drop touched you, that's it, you would evaporate. So in this case with an Navalny, even if he got it on the plane, it's amazing that no one else on the plane seems to have uh, been affected. come down with, with the Novichok uh, no, poisoning, indeed, indeed. given how well, deadly indeed. it is. But, Even uh, it is. I mean, it's, it always seems very strange. And as I said, I mean, I, mean, I, I don't want to be, you know, completely so because I mean, I don't know. But lots of unanswered questions in a story that makes no sense to me. None, none whatsoever. And I mean, again, if it was the Russian government, you know, why do they take him immediately to a hospital? Why do the Russian doctors work for 44 hours to save his life? Why he is, is he allowed to travel to Germany? It doesn't really seem very consistent with any real plan to murder this man so well let, let's get into the whys mm. and uh, maybe we'll we'll also touch on some wares like where mm. scripple and where will mm. navalny end up going after mm. this maybe yeah. he will go the way of the scripples and disappear mm. to to new zealand or uh, that's where they say the scripples are, but you know i don't buy mm. that either anyway yeah. maybe he'll be joining yulia and sergey mm. somewhere mm. but um the whys navalny I wrote three things that I think could be uh, mm -hmm. the reason as to the timing of this. Um, the first one, maybe this is uh, another deep state collaboration between the U.S. and the U.K. Mm -hmm. And maybe Germany is in the mix as well. Obviously, Germany is mm -hmm. probably in the mix as well to create some uh, U.S. election mm -hmm. controversy, some U.S. Mm -hmm. election uh, mm -hmm. narratives. Once again, Russia Gate mm -hmm. poisoning Russia, Kremlin, Trump. Mm -hmm. All that stuff again. Remember Gina Haspel briefing Trump in the White House mm. and all this stuff with the mm. scripples. So maybe this is, this is some some kind of collaboration between the intel agencies of the U.S., the mm. U.K., Germany to create mm. some uh, to stir up mm. some gossip in the U.S. I don't think that's the case, but anyway, I have it down there. Mm. Maybe maybe that's one of the reasons mm. why they've done this to Navalny. Number two is Nord Stream two. Mm. I think this is a very big possibility. Maybe this mm. is a way to uh, throw a monkey wrench in the German-Russian collaboration on Nord Stream 2, which is set to go online any day now. And mm. the number three, maybe this is a little payback for Belarus. Yes. Because maybe the Russians uh, mm. threw a monkey wrench in the Belarus color revolution that the deep state was trying yeah. to, to get moving. Of course, the Trump White House really didn't pay much attention to to that uh to those protests mm. in belarus and eventually they just kind of faded away but maybe this is some payback to russia because russia did mm. insert itself pretty pretty strong in in belarus in order to keep lukashenko mm. up and uh and intact as president so could this have to do with the elections the u.s elections Nord Stream 2 or a little payback for what Russia did in Belarus? Right. I, I, I mean, I don't think it's the US elections because I don't think the American people care enough about this one, to be quite honest. I think that this isn't really about the elections. I think that's it's too remote from the issues in the elections to, to really matter. I mean, there will no doubt be US sanctions over this. It's, you know, it's, it's baked in the cake, if you like. There but, will be some Trump, Putin. Yeah. I mean, there will be some exactly. CNN, MSNBC. Oh, well, uh, there will, there will be, exactly. But I mean, I think by now, even the most, you know, hardened uh, Russiagate um, operators realize these, these, these things don't get particular traction. I think I'm just going to add another possibility to the ones you listed, which I think we must do, which is that he may actually have an internal Russian explanation. I mean, it may be somebody in Russia did this. It may be uh, for all kinds of reasons. I don't think it's got anything to do with the Kremlin for one very simple reason. He's, as we said before in an earlier video, Navalny's star, political star, is fading. And over the last few weeks, as the Russian economy has been growing fast, after the lifting of the uh, 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 pandemic restrictions, Putin's popularity has been growing. So he doesn't, he's not under any kind of political pressure. The Russian government isn't under any kind of political pressure. So I don't see why they would go after a person who is politically inconsequential in this way when it's only going to cause them trouble. But there may be other people in Russia 
who might have wanted Navalny out of the way for some undisclosed reason. I, you know, I just have to throw that in because it's a possibility. Possibility, yeah. It's a possibility. But let's look at the other two. Let's look at the other two things. I mean, Nord Stream 2, I think, is a very strong possibility. I mean, the US has been throwing everything it can to stop Nord Stream 2. And by the way, when we talk about the US, we mean both the Trump administration and Donald Trump himself and his opponents. This is some, one of the few things that everybody in the US seems to be agreed about. They want to stop Nord Stream 2. They've sanctioned it. They've sanctioned uh, companies, German companies and Swiss companies or threaten to sanction them if they go ahead with it. And it seemed to be going ahead anyway. Now, it's possible, it's highly likely that this poisoning or rather this scandal has been to some extent confected in order to throw a monkey wrench into Nord Stream 2. It was very interesting that Angela Merkel yesterday rushed off to this German town where the uh, pipeline is supposed to you know, reach in Germany and reassure the people there that Nord Stream 2 is going to happen and that there won't be a connection between Nord Stream 2 and Navalny's poisoning. But she's going to come under enormous pressure from all the usual people, the British, the Americans, the French, you name it, to try and stop Nord Stream 2. And Merkel is not reliable about these things. She might decide that it's politically too costly and might walk away from it. I would say the German industry will be furious if that happens. There will be problems within the CDU, but it's a real possibility. We must consider it. And it may be that this is the motive behind all of this. The other possibility, payback for Belarus, I think is also quite likely. But I would argue this in a somewhat different way, which is that it may be not so much payback for what the Russians have done in Belarus, but an attempt to poison Navalny at a time when there were expectations that Lukashenko was going to fall. So there would be a crisis in Belarus. And then you would use the fact that Navalny had been poisoned in Russia to try to extend that crisis into Russia. In the event, the situation in Belarus seems to be stabilizing. Lukashenko looks more secure. And as a consequence, Putin in Russia also looks more secure. So if that was the agenda, it didn't work. But, you know, it's possible. It's also possible that this was done in a hurry out of anger that, you know, the Russians and the Belarusians have managed to contain the situation and that this was an attempt basically to hurt Putin uh, and uh, some kind of payback. But I think that's a little less likely because I this looks to me to have been carefully planned in advance. All right. So, I mean, you know, the million dollar question is someone is running around, mm -hmm. someone, some organization is running around poisoning people with Novichok. Well, I, yes. I mean, it, it, well, is it the same people? No. that did the poison to scripple that are doing it to Navalny. What's going on here? Because, yeah. you know, well, before well, scripple, no one, no one ever talked about Novichok. No, poisoning. not at all. Never. It appeared, it appeared on a television program, believe it or not, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a TV series somewhere. Look, I'm going to say this. First of all, we, we have to say that this is Novichok. I mean, it's what the Germans say. We've not yet seen the independent corroboration. The Russians have asked for it. The Germans haven't given them the evidence. I'm going to go with the theory that it is Novichok, because I have no alternative but to do that. Did you give... No, the, never. I mean, they ne the Russians they've the, uh, never shared yeah. it with the Russians. They've never shared it with the Russians. The Germans seems I'm not going to share it with the Russians either. They just say the Russians already know, so we don't need to share it with them because the Russians are obviously guilty, so they must know all about this. So that's that's the line they're taking. I'm going to accept for the purpose of this program that Navalny was poisoned with Novichok, but I do put that question mark over this because... You know, it's possible that this is a whole, the whole thing has been fabricated or invented by someone. Whoever was behind the script pile poisoning, if that was by Novichok, is also behind the Navalny poisoning. And that begs many questions. And clearly, um, some kind of organisation, or at least organisations that work with each other, 
uh, are, are, must be considered to be behind this. I don't think it's the Russian government. As I said, it seems to me much more logical to think that it is some agency or group of agencies that are hostile to the Russian government. But what one would need to find that out would be a independent, impartial investigation, which is what I predict we're not going to get. Yeah. I mean, yeah. You know, I remember the Scripple thing. Even, even there, you even had connections between Scripple and Christopher Steele. So, I mean, yeah. you know, there, there are connections with... Mm. Uh, <laughs> with the elections in the U.S. as well. I mean, I, I don't rule that out either. No. I'm trying to see long, you know, three months ahead. Maybe these guys are, are saying, you know what, we, we got to throw this whole Russia evil thing back into the spotlight. So maybe this is how they're kicking it off. I, I don't know. I mean, the whole thing's just just crazy. It's, it's just crazy. Nuts. As I said, I, I just genuinely, truly don't believe that the vast majority of the American people care. I think by now, everybody in the US has made up their minds about this one way or the other. It's not gonna change a single vote. No, That's my no, I mean, point. I agree with you on that. I think it's the it's mm. the larger narrative yeah. for the world, whether it's the UK or oh, the yeah. US or anywhere, anywhere in the world that, you know, Putin poisons everybody. Absolutely. Uh, even That's, though, even yeah. even when it's hard, when it's not, which is obviously not in his interests right. to do so, he's this compulsive poisoner in the Kremlin who murders his opponents by coming up with these mysterious and extraordinary substances. You know, polonium in the case of uh, uh, Litvinenko back in two thousand six, and now, of course, it's Novichok, which is the new one. Uh, uh, that is that is most used because it sounds exotic and mysterious, and it's the stuff of start spy stories and all that. So you know, uh, th this is the story. It's the narrative. Most people, I'm afraid, believe it. I mean, that's the truth. The vast majority of people accept it as true. It does enormous damage to Russia's reputation. The Russians themselves, I think, shrug their shoulders and understand that they're under enormous pressure and will just carry on. Yeah, I mean, you know, Johnson, Boris Johnson has, has come out and he's oh, yeah. blasted Absolutely. You know, Johnson the, has... the Kremlin for, for this already. I mean, he's already come absolutely. out and has, has said that it's the Kremlin pretty much. Oh, he has, absolutely. The Germans so he just... hasn't differed from May. He hasn't differed from Theresa May. Oh, no, he hasn't. Not, not, not in any way. And if you if you take your mind back to what happened during the Skripal affair, he was one of the most extreme uh, um, advocates at that time of a sanctions war against Russia. So, you know, he was very hard line over the Skripal affair. He's very hard line over the Navalny affair. That's completely predictable. That's exactly what you would expect. But I don't think the Russians, frankly, are very interested in what the British think about this, because from the Russian point of view, Britain is a completely hostile country. They've barely got any kind of relationship with it in any meaningful sense anymore. The days when British and uh, 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 Russian leaders spoke to each other are long gone. So I don't think they particularly care about Germany. They do care. So, I mean, if the relationship with Germany is fractured they will care about that but bear in mind that if that happens what they've basically intimated they will do is that they will increase their relationship now with china which they now have pipelines to so how that serves the west's interests i don't know all right well let me read you real quickly what the what the leaders are saying and we can wrap up this uh mm. this video Mm -hmm. Merkel Block says that Novichok attack only possible with the Kremlin's help. I'm reading this from Zero Hedge, by the way. Yeah. I'll put a link for this article yeah. in the description box. So the Merkel Block says Novichok attack yeah. only possible with Kremlin help. Yeah. UK's Rab says deeply concerned about Navalny poisoning. Rab says Russia has clear case to answer on Navalny poisoning. And Rab says the UK to work with allies on response to poisoning mm. Dominique Rab, uh, Foreign Secretary Dominique Rab. Those were his statements. Borrell, EU's Borrell says, EU condemns poisoning of Alexei Navalny. Borrell says chemical weapons use breach of international law. So do you see where this is going, Alexander? Oh, of course, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's, it's the same narrative that we had with the Skripal affair. We're going to see more sanctions. That's inevitable, by the way. We're going to have the highly likely. Do you remember the highly likely? It was highly likely that Russia was responsible. It's going to be, it's all that all over again. As I said, the Russians 
shrug their shoulders and will carry on because what what choice ultimately do they have? There will be more more pinpricks like this, and Navalny, I'm afraid, as a political force, as a, uh, is probably a spent force in Russia, but he will be useful as a symbol. Yeah. Yeah, he's. Uh, I think you said he's expendable now. At he's this expendable. Point. I mean, he's, him now. he's as I say, he's he's faded. He's not. He's not going to win any. He would never have won any kind of election. So he's more useful to them, in you know, as a as a as a poisoned martyr, a, a tool of controversy. As, yeah. Absolutely, exactly. Than as anything else. Yeah. Um, um, my final question to you is: I'm, I'm trying to figure out why. Why are they so stuck on on? this Russia did it narrative. When obviously, I mean, if you look at the West and say the US, for example, it's obvious their big competition is China. Everyone knows it. Yeah. I'm not saying that's a bad thing or a good thing. I'm just saying it's it's China. China's their big competitor, but they're stuck in this Russia did it narrative. There must be a reason. Remember, we did a video the other day where Schiff is now going on uh, yeah. CNN and MSNBC saying that Russia is to blame Russia and Trump. They're to blame for the riots and, and everything that's going on in the U.S. I mean, once again, you're, you know, you're three months out and we're seeing the U.K. and the U.S. and now Germany and the EU. Once again, they're ramping up this Russia thing again. Yes, the I think it's really just it, strange. It's very weird. And, and as I said, you would have thought that, as I said, the interests of the West would be to try to, to pull Russia away from China not push it further towards China. And you had a you had people like Emmanuel Macron making exactly that point. I mean, you know, Macron has, seems to understand this. He's been concerned to reestablish a dialogue with, with with Russia. But I think the fact is that I think probably the reason these things happen is partly because there are people like Macron talking about the need for a rapprochement of some sort, or a detente of some sort, with Russia. That makes other people who are very hardwired to be anti-Russian, who have huge invest, you know, personal investment in maintaining these very bad and very difficult relations with Russia, you know, they, they want to maintain them in that way. So they come along and they come up with all kinds of you know, highly likely poisonings, whatever. So that's that's what it is. That's why they want to ramp up the tensions with Russia at this time. So it's partly because it's partly in response to the fact that relations with Russia seem to be, some some countries seem to want better relations with Russia at this time. All right. So we'll leave it there, guys. Yeah. Let us know if you like this premiere format. If you liked uh, watching this video in this premiere format. By YouTube, of course. Hopefully, you will also be seeing this on BitChute and other video platforms as well. And we'll leave you with, uh, uh, let's see, a request to subscribe. If you're not subscribed, if you like this video, please subscribe. Also, if uh, you find it in your heart to please donate to us via PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe. Star, your donation really helps. And check out the Durant shop. You can pick up some magic mugs. Some magic mugs. You've got Britain this time. I think I've got uh, some Germany here too. Just I've got, I've <laughs> got. Given the content of this video. <laughs> Definitely. Here's Germany. And by the way, just to be really cheeky, just to be really cheeky, I think, oh no, I, oh no, I do. I've got Russia as well. So there we go. Germany, Russia, the United States, they're all here. They're you all can here. find them. You can find them. You can find them in our shop. Um, you can also, if you don't find your own country there, um, just wait a little because, as I said, we're making more of these mugs all the time. Or, or And if you're still waiting and it's still not there, just drop us a line and we'll see what we can do. But they're the best mugs in the world. I've said this many times. They're fantastic mugs. And they've now got all these flags of all of these countries. And Alex is doing the same with our shirts. We're going to have lots of amazing, wonderful embroidered shirts with national flags, with embroideries. It's going to look they look fantastic. He's already working heavily on that. So keep an eye out for those. And we've also got amazing hats. We've got uh, our truckers hats and baseball caps and embroidered hats. They're all there. And we've also got, of course, our great gallery of ebooks. You can find these all in our shop. You support the Duran by going to our shop and buying, buying these great things. And you will be the owner of these great things. So come to our shop, support the Duran. Alex will tell you how. Just go to the DuranShop.com. You'll find the link in the description box down below. We are signing out for tonight. Alexander Merkurs, take care, everybody. Yeah.